Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Gran Turismo Sport where we are at Fuji International Speedway for the final round of the Nations Cup and it's kind of a one make race really in the McLaren Group 4 car and I've got to be honest this is probably the most frustrating day I have ever had on the game. Um, at the end I just wanted to delete it off the PS5 and never come back to it again but I'm sure I will at some point next week. So standing start then, putting it into traction control on setting one for the best launch and we've actually had a pretty decent getaway as you can see here heading down into turn one keeping it nice and tight on the apex and avoiding all of the chaos although that's been quite a clean turn one for, for this particular race it can quite often be very chaotic um, especially with a standing start into that sharp hairpin at the start of the lap so we're in 11th place we haven't had the best qualifying session um, the qualifying times are very very close here so two or three tenths can be the difference between being right at the front of the grid and being somewhere in the mid pack and if you don't have a slipstream in qualifying um, you will lose that, that couple of tenths really so starting further down than we would have liked but hopefully we can still get something from the race so this again another very very awkward corner especially on the first lap there's lots of cars coming together just trying to avoid everyone if we can there's a little bit of contact there between a few cars up ahead you see basically there has got a one second penalty and he'll have to serve that just as he heads on to the start finish straight now this is a race you may have watch on base college channel and I'm going to skip ahead here um, so you can see the moment that I nearly absolutely killed him so following behind the Belgian up ahead then and the breaking point for this corner is the 150 meter port so you see there 250 200 150 but I've completely missed it just about managed to avoid the Belgian head to the grass and somehow managed to thread the needle and avoid hitting anyone down into turn one so very sorry to whoever was shitting themselves when they saw me on the radar um, if you watch Ollie's on board you'll see that uh, I was very very close to taking him out and we'll ride on board here then from a, a different camera angle you can see missing the braking zone avoided him head to the grass lose the back end just about managed to get across without taking him out so yeah, that was a close one. So skipping ahead to the last lap then, and we decide to box early, retire the car, save the engine for a later race, and move on to our second try. So you can see here, basically, has ended up on pole. And once again, we've not had the qualifying session we're after, so starting 13th. On the outside of the grid then here, and we've got quite a good start again making up one position straight off the line and as we head down into turn one we get absolutely smashed from behind and um, force wide leaving turn one in 18th place so really not the start we wanted let's have a little look at the replay then you can see here moving to the outside breaking with plenty of time and the frenchman just storming up the inside um, he did apologize at the end of the race so clearly accidental and just missed his breaking point for for turn one unfortunately so back into the race then and yeah I mean it hasn't started well but there's a lot that can happen as we get forced wide again now this track is a track that I absolutely love driving however I absolutely hate racing on it it just seems to be a recipe for disaster really and carnage it's like the corners were designed to tempt you into making a move um, but also designed so that contact is inevitable and as we head down to this hairpin here just look how many cars there's like six cars wide there's going to be contact we managed to get through keep it tight and actually make up a space there um, but you can see the penalty starting to be dished out up ahead and, and again these corners they're they're just really awkward um, 
When you're driving them by yourself, it's really, really satisfying to get them right and taking through speed and you know balancing the, the throttle and the brake to get through. But when you're in a pack and you just got cars trying to dive up the inside of you, it's an absolute nightmare. It's just it's just carnage and you know I haven't I'm yet to see a, a clean move done through there. But as we head to the penalty line then, just look at how many other drivers have penalties. One, two, three, four, five and six cars we're going to get past so six cars serving a penalty at one time i don't think i've ever managed to get through that many cars at one penalty line and bearing in mind this is i think either split two or split three at the time um yeah it's just just incredible and it just shows you know the, these are decent drivers and racing against they're not bad drivers obviously it's a 99 sr lobby um dr ranging from Sort of low 60s to high 60s, 70,000, I think possibly. Um, and and you know these are drivers that normally would would not have too much contact with each other. It's not a daily race. Um, we're all very very similar, but this track is just a recipe for for disaster, unfortunately. And it's such a shame because I do feel like I got a lot of pace here. Um, and actually, the race after this, we we did go, decide to go again, and I qualified. Um, on in second place and it was a it was actually a top split race as well but unfortunately we had connection issues and really struggled to um to, to drive basically um you see a few times in this race as well we just have a little bit of lag and it's just hard to judge where other cars are when it lags um and a couple of times as well i'm not sure in this race but some of the other races I actually lost the slipstream due to a bit of lag on the straight so um yeah really really difficult to race with unfortunately don't have the best internet and it's also one of the reasons that I haven't done any live streams for quite a while you see there Louis up ahead uh, lagging through that corner so yeah it's one of the reasons I haven't been able to do that much live streaming because uh, if I if I'm streaming at the same time um, it yeah it just gets worse so um, a lot of the time it's, it's absolutely fine um, but for, for whatever reason Wednesday night it was it was playing up again unfortunately so um, you know, we're still driving, we're trying to make the, the best out of it, um, do the best we can, but yeah, it's, it's hard when you just have to keep an eye on people jumping around all the time. So the uh, eagle-eyed amongst you might notice that we're shifting really early in the McLaren, and that's something you need to do with this group forecast. So because of the balance of performance settings, it means the torque, uh, of the, en the max torque of the engine is basically, basically altered altered and the uh, the fastest way to drive it is basically shifting just as the rev limiter passes the uh, the gear the gear number on the display so um, that's the best place to shift for the best acceleration and top speed so you'll notice all of the drivers doing the same thing as Louis gets very deep down into the awkward hairpin and gives us plenty of room so we move up into ninth place then and hopefully we can maybe get a top 10 finish in this one. Now we're going to jump ahead onto lap 8 here then. Just about to cross the finish line to go on to lap 9. As not an awful lot has happened. You can see I've, I've closed a bit of the gap up to P8 in, ahead. Um, but as we head down into turn 1 then on lap 9. The car behind is going to try and move. We give him room little bit of a touch there and end up being forced wide so he's managed to make a move up past us and we're now down into 10th place but sometimes having a, an extra car in between can help us bridge the gap to the group up ahead so you can see 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th and 5th place all very close in this race actually 4th I think, 4, 5, 6, 7, yep so 4th place up to 10th is all very very close so all it takes is a couple of penalties or a bit of contact uh, and state from someone and we can um, you know gain from that and, and end up making quite a few paces up so still a good result can be made from this race five laps to go um, five and a half laps to go as we see a few moves going down into the hairpin and it's getting very very close and you know it's, it's actually quite good that we got overtaken because it's just enabled us to bridge that gap we're gonna have slipstream on the main straight now and should be in with a chance of potentially 
making up a few positions in this one. As we see up ahead, the Swiss dryer bar getting ahead of the Frenchman there. And we've got a bit of a run. We're going to put it fairly close to the inside, but the Frenchman covers it off as well. So um, nothing we can do there. And then we get out on the rumble strip, unfortunately, lose a bit of speed. And that just drops us back a little bit. So we're going to have to try to catch up for the first half of this lap. And you'll see here just folding it around. So as we head down into the awkward, tight, twisty section again, cars side by side up ahead, kicking up some dust, kicking up a bit of grass. And we get through there nice and clean as well. Just hoping that one of the cars up ahead might make a mistake or end up getting themselves a penalty. You see the Frenchman going very, very tight there, starting to push on the other Frenchman. And we get a fairly good run on him actually here. So we send it up the inside, keeping it nice and tight, making sure we give him enough room on the exit. But as he's had a wider line as we come out of that corner, he's managed to get a better exit than we have. So we're going to just sit back in his slipstream for now as we head down into turn one. And you see here, there we go, just the lag again becoming a bit of an issue. But as we then head down into turn one, we're going to go for the move. But under braking, you can see dress drifts out in front of me. We tap him, and then as we're trying to balance the car, um, he then turns in to make the corner, but we're still trying to balance the unsettled car and unfortunately make a bit of contact there. So not much we could have done, unfortunately. Um, yeah, a uh, bit of a racing incident. It's just one of those where where we're uh, both on the brakes and he's drifted into my path as we're on the brakes. Um, I just couldn't get out of the way, unfortunately. And then from there, the, uh, the car was just, uh, it was just about trying to balance the car. And unfortunately, he turned in to make the apex as normal um, while I'm still trying to, to balance the car after the contact. So a bit unfortunate, um, but he hasn't lost too much time. So yeah, on to the rest of the race then. And we can see one of the cars up ahead has a penalty and we've moved up the inside on the um the frenchman in the blue mclaren there as the swift driver up ahead serves the penalty and it's going to be a drag race up to the first corner and it's all about who manages to get the slipstream of the car in front you can see the guy up ahead did move to the right initially and we're able to just gain a little bit of speed from that as we're in the slip and that gives us the position um, but you can see the belgian coming at me from the right hand side and just about giving him room there's a little bit of contact but we managed to keep it fast on the exit around the outside and hold that position so into seventh place then and just a couple of laps to go and it's looking quite good at this point we've, we've managed to make a, a decent comeback having been down in last place at one point um, obviously helped with the massive amount of penalties that we've had earlier on in the race but now we're just, just going to try and get ahead down see if we can push up towards sixth place and you can see as well up ahead fourth and fifth are very close as well so there's still a good chance of scoring some decent points here as we forward the speed heading on to the start finish straight as we look to begin lap 13 here then and as we head up to the line you can see we've got a pretty good tow here we start to get an over speed on him he moves to the inside to cover off the corner. So we go to the outside and we now see in the mirror, we are fully ahead of him, um, but he's gone quite late on the brakes. We've given him room up the inside and unfortunately we just get nudged a little bit wide and couldn't take advantage of that, um, that move unfortunately. So not to worry, we will have another go again um, later on in the race. You can see there, if you, you were looking at the mirror, it's just there again, the lag. Um, getting in the way really um, like I said I did race again after this but the, the lag was worse and it was just it was very very difficult to to race against people with with that kind of lag so we'll speed things up again here then and you'll see as we head around the final corner onto the start finish straight to begin the last lap we're a little bit further back than we were on the previous lap so we're not going to be able to make a move up into turn one and we're actually going to come under a little bit of pressure from the Belgian behind. So we're going to move to the right slightly and break in the middle of the track. And that just stops him from sending it up the inside. So we've covered that off 
quite well there and we just need to spend the rest of this lap trying to gain on the driver up in front and put him under pressure if we can and try to take any opportunities that may present themselves as we head into the final part of this lap um, but once again you'll see just as I come around this corner here the lag dropping in further back and it's just it's very difficult um, to race when, when that's happening and like I said I, I did do another race after this um, in which I had my best qualifying qualified second and the lag just, just ruined that race for me unfortunately I just couldn't couldn't race side by side with anyone um, just had to get out of the way so um, the driver up here, he's gone very defensive, he's gone deep uh, we've turned it in nicely side by side then we get a little tap, we're forced wide out on the rumble strip and that allows the Belgian to get up ahead of us and then from nowhere it seems the Frenchman has dived up the inside barging us off the track and makes up that position and no penalty there um, but we did knock him earlier on in the race so it's kind of kind of a bit of karma there really although it wasn't intentional um, the, the first come together and two drivers up ahead then side by side as we head around the final corner but we're going to cross the line in ninth place and having made such a good comeback and then lost a couple of positions right at the end you can understand how just how frustrating this was um, yeah it just wasn't my game it wasn't my day on the game so I'm going to have a few days off, maybe come back at the end of next week and do some dailies. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, um, please give a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.